Ever wonder what motivates people to get plastic surgery? Did they regret it? What can we learn from the weird and wild stuff that happens at our plastic surgery clinic? We're going to tell some stories, get some laughs, and learn on Clinic Talk with Sabrina Sajan on the Plastic Surgeon Podcast. Hello, my friends. I'm Dr. Javad Sajan, and of course, I'm here with my lovely wife and CEO of Allure Aesthetics, Sabrina Sajan. Welcome back, and thanks for listening. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts to support the channel. On Clinic Talk, we tell real stories of fun, strange, hopeful, and educational things that happen at our clinics from day to day. We get a lot of weird and hilarious things happening at the clinic. You can find the clinic at AlluraAesthetic.com for more information. So, John, what clinic stories are we talking about today? So, John, I was doing a training for one of our newer providers, and she brought somebody on the DNS list. What? Yes, yes. So, what happened is this was a weekend training for one of uh, injection training. Mm-hmm. So, we have some new providers right now that we're you know we're expanding. Yeah. So we can take care of all of our amazing, super, uh, fantastic patients. So I, I tell the person who I'm training, I'm like, hello, uh, we're going to do training on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you can bring a friend who's a candidate for this kind of product, right? And mm-hmm. we're doing filler. So I'm like, okay, why don't you bring a friend who's a filler candidate? And the person's like, yeah, I have so many friends who are filler candidates. I'm happy to bring you one who's a filler candidate. So then, um, you know, the, she, uh, the, the person goes through the week on Saturday. I get here. My front desk is there. And the um, the person I'm training comes with their fr- and they call and they're like, oh, we're here. And the front desk person was getting everything ready. It was a weekend. We're closed. So I said, okay, I'll just hop down and come get you all. Hmm. So I go downstairs to the lobby of the building and um, down down the elevators, the front desk and through the glass doors. And I see this person wearing a mask with the person I'm training. And I'm like, I tell myself, this person looks familiar. But I, I, don't, I can't put my finger on it, right? Hmm. So then... Um, we're like, okay, well, it's probably just a little coincidence. I have the privilege of taking care of so many people, and it probably just looks familiar. Mm-hmm. So then uh, you know, I, I had to use my access card to bring them up. That's why I went down, because the elevators are locked on the weekend. Mm-hmm. So then we get in the elevator, and then the person who's going to be receiving the free product uh, starts talking to me. I'm like, that voice is really familiar. And I start getting a little bit of goosebumps. <laughs> I'm like, something's not feeling right. This doesn't, doesn't smell right. I'm like, okay, it sounds really familiar, but I can't put my finger on it. So then we come upstairs, they take a seat in the lobby, and I go to my desk, and the front desk person takes over. And then the you know, the usual process when somebody comes and gets fillers is they have to um saw, we have to do a COVID screening. Mm-hmm. And after that, we have to do a COVID survey in our special electronic system, and then we assign all the consents. So the front desk person goes and does their COVID screening. And as soon as she puts this person's name, I'm not going to say their name. They're the person receiving the free product. All these red alerts pop up on the computer. Danger, danger, <laughs> DNS patient, DNS patient, stop, do not schedule. That's what DNS stands for. And then the front desk person comes running to the back with me. And I'm like, what happened? Someone, I thought somebody fainted. You know, when someone collapses, maybe they were nervous. I'm like, oh, what's going on? I'm like, what happened? And the front desk is like, the person receiving the free product that we'll be doing training on is a DNS patient. Oh my God. Out of all people in the world. In the world. I'm like, no, you're kidding. You got the name wrong. There's no way. We're doing a training. The person I'm training. That's her friend. Yes. It's her best friend. And I'm like, W-T-H. There's no way out of all the people in Washington state, <laughs> this random person is on our DNS list. Mm-mm-mm. So um, then the front desk person is there and we're sitting there looking at each other. What do we do? We have a DNS patient. And she's filling consents in the lobby. Yes, yes. Oh, God. And I'm like, oh, goodness. Uh, well, you know, the rule is if you're on the DNS list, we can't treat you. So then I bring back the provider. Yeah, so basically what mm-hmm. DNS means is... Um, the patient had did not. We were unable to provide the patient with an amazing experience, so we feel that um, we're unable to further treat them or 
you know, further have them in our office is because we feel that they're going to be unhappy. Um, and for us, the most important thing is for patients to, you know, have an av- amazing experience to um, come here and make sure that they, they're they happy for what, what they're getting. And if a patient goes on a DNS list, that just means that, you know, we're unable to provide the experience up to their level. It's not a good fit. Yeah, it's that, just not a good fit. It's not a good fit. We're not trying to say anybody's cuckoo for cuckoo puffs. <laughs> no one's like, we don't believe in that. We don't use the C word in the office. C word known as crazy. We don't use that. No one's crazy. We're not crazy. You're not crazy. No one's crazy. However, sometimes it's not a good fit. And the one thing for everyone to know is when you're a provider treating a patient, it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. And that relationship has to be mutually engaging and mutually accepting. And And I think there's something, just piggybacking mm -hmm. on this, I think recently we had a patient um, getting an injection. I think this was a separate um, day. It was like a Monday or Tuesday. And the patient was just not a good fit with one of our injectors. And they were really upset. And, you know, they were like, why can't you treat me? Why can't you just do my filler? Like, well, she just feels that you're not a good fit for her. And maybe that, you know, you guys just not vibing together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she was very unhappy. And, you know, she left a not nice review um, because a provider told her that they're just not a good fit. At our practice, And I know this is hard for some people to believe, right? We love our patients. We thank God every day for the blessings we have and for the volume of people we have the privilege to serve. However, we will not treat someone to make a sale. Mm -mm. We don't care about that. It's important. We know we have to keep the business going, but we will not sacrifice our values, our morals, or good judgment. Now, just because we refuse to treat someone doesn't mean that person is not a candidate somewhere else. It just means you're not a candidate at our practice. And what's happening to our practice more and more is, you know, through God's grace, the more we get known, the more we have people coming in sort of requesting things that we may not be able to achieve. You know, sometimes when we can't treat them, we'll just nicely say, you know, thank you. We appreciate you. Let's refer that patient somewhere else and we'll refer them to great people. Yeah, that's true. Back to your story. Okay. So now (laughs) we have this um, DNS patient, as you guys know what that means now, who's filling out paperwork. This front desk is having an episode. So I'm like, okay, why don't you bring back the provider? And we, so we sit down. I'm like, look, you brought somebody on the DNS list. What were you thinking? And the provider's like, I didn't know it was on the DNS list. Well, I'm like, we can't, I'm like, tell me about this person. Are they really? Somebody we can't make happy. And they're like, no, I think the person's great. I've known them since childhood. And now I'm like, oh, goodness, is this provider also going to be on the DNS list? <laughs> you know? Stop. Stop. And I'm like, oh, goodness. All right. So then I'm like, well, <laughs> serious. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, well, we can't treat them. You're going to have to go in. Tell, tell your the, friend. <laughs> you know, tell your friend that they're on the they're, you know, they're on the DNS list. And I shouldn't have said that. That led to a whole thing. Um, and then, you know, please um, have a nice day. So it was good seeing you. Go enjoy the sun. And so then the provider walks to the lobby to tell the DNS person that you're on the list and can't treat you. <laughs> so then I'm like, I want to hear what's going on because I'm super interested. So I go and hide behind the hallway <laughs> corner and I'm like listening into this conversation. And so the provider tells the DNS person, you're on the DNS list. We can't treat you. And this person's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why can't I treat me? I've been, I've been this, that, and the other. I'm, I have good money. And then um, she's like, no, they won't, he won't treat you. We won't treat you. We can't train you. You can't come to any practice affiliated with us. We're so sorry. It's just not a good fit. And then the DNS person has the audacity to say, well, they better check their Yelp reviews in the morning. Oh, that's so rough. I know. I'm like, I'm happy. I'm going to double DNS per that list, that person, you know? Uh, I'm going to block Can you their- imagine what they would do if they got the filler and were unhappy? Now you have a person who you've treated and they're unhappy and they're on the DNS list. Exactly. And once you treat someone, you're committed to for their treatment. You know, you can't just say, go away. You got to make sure they they're, have a reasonable result and they're happy. So that was a tough one. Dodged a bullet. I really think we did. You know, I was on the fence. I was like, well, I'll just maybe I'll just slide and let it go because this person's known them. But uh, man, when they made that comment, I was like, and then, and then the DNS person starts laughing in the lobby like it's some kind of joke. Wow. Maybe it's a joke for you, but you know, we can't have you in this practice. Sorry, DNS person, if you're watching, you know, you're a nice person, you're kind. I'm sure you're great to some people, not to us. We wish you the best. Yeah. And then the DNS patient has the, I found that sto- the story in the following day, but the DNS patient has the audacity to call the office the next day. No way. Yeah. 
Huh? Yeah. What, tr- what did they say? Trying to complain that we didn't treat them. It was a free treatment. They weren't even paying. It was training. That's correct. So what was the complaint? That we're basically not nice people and we're not trying to treat her and she's a good candidate and basically just complaining about the experience. And we're like, well, you weren't even treated. It was a free treatment. Your friend brought you here. Um, we, we're just, you know, like, I don't understand what the issue is here. Yeah. Like, what are you even complaining about? I know. They're probably going to go on Yelp and talk about this podcast. Yes, they definitely will. Let's it's going it. to be a one page, one page review. I'm going to go ahead. What can we do? I'm going to respond to that one nicely. Okay. So, John, um, I heard we had a runaway. <laughs> yes. What happened? So, this past weekend or two weekends ago, one weekend ago, we went to University Village, remember? Yeah. Yeah. So, Serena's first time, I ended up taking there. We were looking at some furniture. So, there were some furniture stores there. Um, we, we went and looked at RH, Pottery Barn, and the other store was closed. Room and board. Yeah, room and board was closed. Mm hmm. And um, and then we're walking right at Joey's Bar and Grill. Yes. So we're just walking around, just, you know, looking at stuff, shopping. And we're like, oh, we should, you know, try eat here. Maybe it looks nice. There's a lot of people there. It was mm-hmm. real, so busy. The weather was really nice. And, you know, as, as we're walking, we wanted to go in there and make a reservation because we're really busy. And as we're walking, I think you were on my right side and I was the left side. And Joey's has like an outdoor seating area and then an indoor as well. And we're walking like past the in- outdoor seating area and I see an ex-employee. Oh, yeah. I remember? remember? Yes, yes. So they were sitting in the out, they were sitting at Joey's, but in the outdoor seating area. Yes, yes. Mm. So I recognized them right away. And I was like, oh, I know who that is. And I was just going to be nice and be like, hey, what's up? You know, Um and just say hi, like I, you know, it is what it is. You know, people move on; it's no big deal. Um, and I was, as I was walk, we were walking past. I looked at you. I was like, "Oh, hey, I think it's this person." And you're like, "Oh, really?" And then um, they're like putting their head down the entire time, like trying to hide their face after they saw you. Yes, mm. like they were like literally, like completely head down, and like you could barely tell who they were. Were they, they eating food or were they just seated? It seemed like they were just seated because they just had like full cups of water on their table mm-hmm. and like a new set of like fork and knife. Mm-hmm. So I think they I think they were just seated from what I could tell. Yeah. And and they probably waited 30 minutes because Joey's had a 30 minute wait that day. Yeah, she's a 30 to 45 minute wait. And and then we go in we're like go inside and I was like, hey, like that that's that person. And like you turn around and I turned around and they were gone. They disappeared. So I, I so this ex employee person told us they left town because somebody died and somebody was having a breakdown, so they wanted to go back home out of state. So that's why we you know we're like sounds good you, you know if you can quit you're welcome to quit it's up to you however whatever reason you have but thank you for telling us right so we felt bad and the whole we situ- sent them flowers yes the situation was very shady so apparently somebody died so Sabrina sends them flowers and. Sabrina's like, what's your home address out of state because of this death? We want to send flowers and a little care package for, for your family. Yeah. And they give us a P.O. box in Seattle to mail the flowers to. Yeah. So then I asked, you know, this person and I was like, hey, um, I, I don't know if I'm able to send this care package flower thing um, to a P.O. box. Like, is there like a better address? I know you're from another state. I know your family's it, from in this other state. Can I send it to them? And basically she refused to send another address. And she just said, oh, just send it over here. I'll go pick it up from this address. And I will physically take it with me to this other state, which was really weird because I'm like, why wouldn't you just give me the address? Like I would, I wasn't going to like stalk you or anything. Like I was just like trying to be nice and send you flowers and a care package to your family. Mm-hmm. And whatever, I mean, people, you know, have their reasons or whatever, but super shady, but, you know, I wish mm-hmm. people the best, but it's just so funny because, you know, your lies always will come back to you. I know. So <laughs> then, so these people probably waited 40 minutes for a seat. Allegedly, they're supposed to be out of state or this person is supposed to be. And then we saw them and they got so embarrassed. It looks like they ran away after waiting 30 to 40 minutes just to sit down. Yeah, it was like they they were they went into like they were invisible in like t- not even a minute. I remember like going in and then we turn around and they're gone. And I'm like, 
I'm almost a hundred. Like I was not daydreaming. It was like Clark Kent <laughs> trying to become Superman. <laughs> it was definitely them, but you know, it is what it is. But you know, all I'm saying is it's not a good idea to lie. I think so. It was weird. The whole situation was shady. Uh, that was out of control. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that it was is story. what it is. It is what it is. So John, I had a really funny experience with a caregiver. Oh, really? So so when I do surgery for patients, they all get my cell phone. Mm-hmm. And the reason I do this is because if there's an emergency at night and weekend, you need to be able to access me, right? Mm-hmm. And I always tell them, you can call me, text me, or FaceTime, whatever you need. So it's uh, so this was a patient who I did a BBL on and some other things, but a BBL was the main reason that this person was, call- their caregiver was calling me. So uh, it's 11 o'clock at night. We're at home after surgery, and I get a phone call. Uh, from the caregiver, sort of freaking out, saying, I got this. I don't know what to do with it. I'm like, what do you got? He's like, oh, it's this, it's this um, uh, I don't know what exactly it is. It looks like a bandage or something. So I'm like, okay, uh, why don't you FaceTime me? I'll help you with it. And so when we do a BBL, we always give a patient um, these, these you know, nice, high-quality adult diapers. Uh, they're called Depends, right? Or you've seen different brands of it. And we do that because you get le- leakage from sometimes where the fat is put in. Mm-hmm. So you get those and you change it uh, every, you know, every eight hours to keep it clean and dry. So I FaceTime the caregiver, who's a ni- really sweet, nice guy. And he um, FaceTimes me. And the first thing I see is the patient's totally sitting the wrong way, <laughs> um, not using their BBL pillow. Uh, there's a special pillow you got to use for BBLs. And then he's like, um, the patient has drains and the nice caregiver is like, oh, how do I empty the drain? Really nice guy. And I'm like, you pull up the tube and throw it in a, throw it in a bucket, right? Mm. Which is no big deal. And then he holds up this uh, the diaper. He's like, where do I put this? Where does this go? <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's, it's a diaper. Yeah. You just take off the existing diaper and put a new one on. It's not that, you know, no worries. I understand. But you, you can't really put it anywhere else, you know? <laughs> it has two holes for legs. Can't put it on the head. Can't put it on the arm. You got to put it where it goes. That was, that, was, that was a funny one. It's so funny because, um, you know, we give all of our patients a post-op care package, basically what it's called, or, or a care bag. Basically, they get a bag. Um, it has a lot of like ABD pads and, um, di- you know, adult diapers. And it has um, some other care items. It has, we give them a snack bag with snacks and juice. Um, and we, there's a nausea bag in there as well in case, you know, they feel nauseated during their trip to the house. Um, so I remember a similar story. Um, there's a patient and a caregiver. Surgery was on a Wednesday. Um, they come back for their post-op on Thursday and they're at the front desk. They're like, there's this thing, there's this blue, there's this plastic blue, um, bandage that's in my bag. And I just could not figure out where to put it last night. And we're like, what blue bandage do we give this patient? And we're Mm -hmm. like, this like the front desk comes and like we can't understand what the patient's saying. Can you help us? So myself and the front desk and then one of our other nurses, we all go to the front desk and this patient's like trying to explain it. He's like, it's this long piece of plastic thing. It's a blue, it's a bandage, but there's no stickiness to the bandage. Like, how do I wrap it around myself? Like, what, what do I do with it? And we're mm-hmm. super confused because we're like, we've never seen this blue piece of bandage before. And we're like, I'm like, hold on, hold on. Let me just go to the back and let me grab one of the post-op care bags. And then we're going to go through the post-op care bag and see what this patient's asking for. Mm-hmm. So I go back to the um, room and I grab one of the post-op care bags. And we're like, we're going through every single item in the post-op care bag. I'm like, mm-hmm. is it this? Is it this? Is it this? And then we go to the last item and we're I'm like, is it this? Because that's the only blue thing in this bag. And he's like, yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Where do I put that? Where do I put that? I'm like, oh my God, you don't put that anywhere. That's a nausea bag. <laughs> yes. That's the emesis ba- uh, bag, the blue thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause it, it like folds, I think, and it goes out and in to mm-hmm. like put it in your bag. So the patient was so confused as to what, where they should put that. Um, and they were trying everywhere on their body to like stick it somewhere because they felt that they were not doing something correctly. Oh my God. That's so funny. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, it was, it was just a really funny story. Cause well, it's a good thing they didn't try to wear it. <laughs> like a stocking or something. Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah. But it's just a nausea bag just in case that they don't feel well, they can use it. <laughs> yeah. So the blue plastic bag with the pla- uh, with the ring on the end, you know, it can look like many things, <laughs> but it's, 
a nemesis or nausea bag. Yes. Thank you for listening to Clinic Talk on the Plastic Surgeon Podcast. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts to support the channel. Tune in next time for more Clinic Talk. We have more great stories coming your way. For my live surgeries on Snapchat and adventures throughout the week, catch us on all social media at Real Doctor Seattle. See you next time. Bye. Sam, what?